Hello, this is Deborah Anderson, the Black Woman Animator, coming back to you with another video. And in this video, I have Bob Tyler. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, or a little bio, if you will? Uh, well, <clears throat> I've been in, in animation over, over 40 years, <clears throat> and uh, it's been a great, <clears throat> great adventure, I would say. Uh, started at Disney starting in mail room <clears throat> like three months after Walt passed away I started in the mail room mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know anything about animation <clears throat> I just knew I wanted to draw mm -hmm. anyway, I was able to get into the mail room <clears throat> uh, when you work in the mail room at Disney you you deliver mail packages coffee to all the departments on the lot and uh, by doing that I met a lot of uh, influential people Mm -hmm. asking, what do you want to do after the mail room? And I, <clears throat> I couldn't decide. So they said, well, how about animation? And we'll set you up <clears throat> with a desk. And uh, you can get, <clears throat> at the time, they were just finishing up on Jungle Book when I started. Mm -hmm. So they gave me some <clears throat> in-betweens to practice on, on uh, Aristocats, which were just starting production. So, uh, I, they set me up in a room, gave me a desk, and a portable desk to take home. So I practiced just literally day and night. Mm -hmm. uh, learn how to in between, getting the thick and thin line uh, up to par. And um, was it, <clears throat> in the meantime, they uh, sent me, they, well, they paid for me to go to Chouinard Art School in the evenings after work. Mm -hmm. The studio paid my tuition. Nice. But this was before Cal Arts. Mm -hmm, yeah. So it used to be uh, Chenard. <clears throat> so uh, did that for like <clears throat> two or three years. And uh, then from, from the mail room, they didn't have a position open at the time. So <clears throat> Filmation requested a, a, someone to come over to help them on their rush season. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Filmation. I didn't in those days. You didn't have a portfolio. It's got word of mouth. So yeah, <clears throat> when I was in the mail room, I used to sketch the Disney characters that I was waiting for for a delivery or, or a package to be delivered. So based on my sketching, I took the Filmation and and I went straight to uh, the layout department based on <clears throat> my sketches. Mm -hmm. So I uh, worked at Filmation. <clears throat> for the first season. And then after uh, Filmation went to uh, Bill Melendez on the first Charlie Brown uh, feature. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there went to, uh, it was Fine Art Films. <clears throat> it was a feature they did, John Wilson production, uh, Archie and Mahila Bell. That mm -hmm. was done in the 60s. I don't know if you've seen that or not. I don't think I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> basically the story is based on a newspaper reporter committed suicide mm -hmm. and came back as a cockroach. And so this actually is on YouTube. It's called Archie and Mehitabel or Shin, Shinbone Alley. They had two different Oh, stories. okay. Yeah, I saw Shinbone Alley. <laughs> okay, so that's, the, that's the picture. So from there, uh, worked for uh, Chuck Jones for five years on all his TV specials. Mm -hmm. The first one was um, uh, Cricket in Times Square. Mm -hmm. They did Regna and Andy Mobley and his brothers, uh, Yankee Doodle Cricket, which was mm -hmm. celebrating the uh, 1976, celebrating two years of U.S. independence. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I went for uh, the Japanese studio was called Sanrio. <clears throat> it was right across the street from uh, Chuck Jones on the corner of Sunset and Vine. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did. They changed the name a couple of times. I don't know if it ever was released. It was called um, uh, Metamorphosis. Then they changed it to the title of the Winners of Change. Yeah, I saw your name on that. I was like, is this right? I see all these <laughs> Japanese names. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and then I worked uh, briefly with Ralph Batchy on the first Frisky Cat. Mm -hmm. And he was a challenge to work with. <laughs> So um, I think I lasted two weeks. He hired me. Then two weeks later, he he, he laid uh, myself and Bob Foster off as mm -hmm. the production manager or to uh, <clears throat> hire too many people. So they laid us off. 
mm -hmm. and they stayed and hired more people. So he he was he was a <clears throat> he was <laughs> different. Anyway, from that, <laughs> but I wound up working for him on a freelance basis. Did mm -hmm. the second Fritz, I mean, with Coos Skin. Um, <clears throat> I forget the other ones I worked uh, on with, with Ralph. And then from there, I went, uh, went back to Disney. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ali Johnson and <clears throat> Frank Thomas we, we became good friends. Mm -hmm. So Ali Johnson got me back uh, at Disney on a six month training program. So you had uh, six months to do a pencil test. You pick out a Disney character. Mm -hmm. You had six months to animate it. And after six months, the nine old men would look at your pencil test and see mm -hmm. if you were <clears throat> good enough to go on uh, Robin Hood. Yeah. So uh, at the time, my mentor was uh, Eric Lawson. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he took me on his wings and uh, showed me how to uh, do the in-between assistant work. So um, <clears throat> the character I picked out was uh, Goofy. Mm -hmm. so I animated Goofy for six months, uh, and then every Thursday, <clears throat> and, and I don't know if you still have, but we used to call them sweat boxes at the studio. Mm -hmm. It was like little miniature theaters where uh, you had a projection, projectionist <clears throat> and yourself, and they just either ran. I think I saw every Goofy film that was ever made, ever made every Thursday just for inspiration and get ideas. Mm -hmm. So I did that for six months, and after the six months, they looked at uh, my chest, and so they put me on production with uh, Johnny Lonsberry. Mm -hmm. uh, the character he was doing was the sheriff, <clears throat> sheriff of Nottingham, mm -hmm. and I worked with him. Another gentleman, I think he passed away now. Um, oh, I won't forget his name. Uh, forget his name now. Oh, Chuck, 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 Chuck Williams, I believe he was. He was assistant and I was a breakdown artist. Mm -hmm. But in the interim, uh, <clears throat> Johnny, uh, John Lonsbury passed away. So I went over to Milk Call's unit, mm. worked with Milk, and he was working on, on uh, <clears throat> Robin Hood. In those days, the senior animators had close up shots, and the B and C animators had long shots and fast action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I worked with Milk, Milt, uh, worked with Ali Johnston, and um, still was being mentored by Eric Lawson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked on, <clears throat> see, the sheriff, uh, the king, I was the state, uh, I forget his name now, King, when the King John, I forget the name. Uh, little, little, I, forget, I forgot the king's name. I know his name is John. But anyway. Yeah. The, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, I worked on on the, uh, Sir Hiss, the snake as well. Mm -hmm. And those <clears throat> on production, we use like three pencils. You would use your graphite uh, <clears throat> for your cleanup line, and mm -hmm. then you use a blue pencil. Just you would rough that rough, and when you would clean up a blue line, where the effects, the special effects department would take over. Like mm -hmm. something that's sparkling. And then you have uh, it's called heliotrope pencil, which is like a red. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you would use that for color separation uh, for the anchors. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure they don't do that anymore. But yeah, <laughs> but your line had to be just, I mean, it was critical. Yeah, but yeah. It was fun. So in those days, it took three years to do a feature. So you had three years, you would have a stack of scenes on your desk and you had three years to, uh, to do it, but you have to do a certain amount of footage each week. Yeah. I think those days like maybe 10 or 15 feet a week. Mm -hmm. it take you almost an hour, an hour and a half to do one drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, you had a production schedule, but it wasn't, it wasn't crazy like it is now, you know, getting a feature out in six months. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Which speaks to the quality of some of them. Right, right. So after, see, after Disney, um, Hannah Barber, oh, in the intro was Hannah Barbera. I went, uh, worked for Hannah Barbera off and on, on the Flintstones and the Jetsons. <clears throat> um, 
worked on some Hallmark specials that Disney did. I worked with uh, Dave Mitchell on those. And then uh, Ted Turner bought out Hannah Barbera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I worked work for Ted Turner. So they were doing the feature once upon a time. Mm -hmm. Dave, uh, uh, <clears throat> Dave Michener, which is grandson of H.J. Uh, Mitchell, the writer. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a director at Disney and he went over to Hannah Barbera. So they sent me over to uh, Taiwan for seven months to mm -hmm. oversee production <clears throat> on, on the feature. So I was in Taiwan six months. After that, then um, Ted Turner, Hannah Barbera, and Warner's merged. So I wound up working on Cats Don't Dance. Mm -hmm. And um, another one was called uh, Page Master. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think the last one I worked on was uh, Iron Giant with Brad Bird. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I had a crew of like 15 assistants. I was the, the lead key on, on the, uh, the, the, the FBI agent <clears throat> in, uh, on uh, Iron Giant. I think the name was Ken. Mm -hmm. So I was responsible for the quality control on that. And then on Castle Dance, <clears throat> I had a, a crew of, uh, I was a lead key on that, on the uh, Danny, the main character, mm -hmm. uh, Jay Jackson and, uh, uh, what was his name, Bob, I forget, I forget his name now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then from there, went to work with uh, Fred Wolf, and then Fred Wolf sent me over to Ireland for seven months to work on, to actually to teach Irish artists how to do system work on Ninja Turtles. So yeah. I was in Ireland, Dublin for seven months, uh, working on Ninja Turtles. <clears throat> then <clears throat> the intro my work, they sent me over to China for two weeks because they were over, they thought they would miss production. So they sent some work to China to help them with long production. So I went over to uh, mainland China, which was an experience. Mm -hmm. I, I was the only, so-called flying the buttermilk over there. <laughs> right. So that was interesting. That was yeah. interesting. So uh, from there, you came back, they, they were at Warners. And um, this was like in the, <clears throat> the 95, 96, when animation was was booming. Mm -hmm. Studios were were bidding on, on artists. I mean, they were even having um, what you call, uh, if you sign a contract, they would, they would, they would get, they would uh, pay you to work for the studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, most, a lot of the artists had, a, had an attorney and the attorney would shop around your portfolio. Mm -hmm. It was a dead on, on you, you know, we'll get me a signing, I'm sorry, signing bonus. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, that's how I wound up working, I had an offer from DreamWorks and Disney, in hindsight, maybe I should have went to Disney, but I went to Warner's instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I uh, worked until Warner's until, um, I think 2005 or seven. And then I started doing fine art after that. Mm -hmm. That reached my pay grade. And after, you know, and then your hair started turning gray. And they want to just, you know, look at and do fresh stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it, it's been a fun ride, and a lot of pictures I forgot I've worked on. I don't know if you look at the, uh, I forget the website where they give you, they show all your credits. Yeah, I usually list it out. You listed most of it. Yeah, I, some of the productions I've, I forgot. I was yeah. commercial, uh, when they used to do Tony the Tiger commercial, you know, paper and pencil, you used to work do that, and some of the... Uh, oh, that's um, cool. Um, I love Frost and Play Play. <laughs> it was uh, all state. <clears throat> the hand used to be animated when they, mm -hmm. and then uh, did two commercials for. Um, it was a Jamaican. It was a Jamaican bank and a Jamaican uh, beverage company. <clears throat> did, uh, they sent the work over here. I think yeah. Sent it yeah, actually, it was Leo Silver and I. We we worked on that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, it's been a, a great experience being an anime. I mean, it was it took me from <clears throat> from high school. I had a, a Mr. Elgin, 
he was my uh, art teacher and he would say, oh, you should, you should try Disney. And this, is, <clears throat> this is right out of high school. Mm -hmm. so, naive me. So I go to shop around the studios and I didn't know that, you know, they weren't, they weren't hiring people of color mm -hmm. this in the fifties. And <clears throat> I, I didn't know. So I sent letters to Warner's and Disney and it was a lot of satellite studios in those days, like, yeah. Yeah. like four or five in Hollywood. I think it was uh, Film Fair, um, Playhouse Films. It was, it was quite a few. But um, I, I did the, I, <clears throat> from from high school to it took almost off and on nine years to get my foot in the door, which I got in, as I stood. Uh, started at the uh, in the mail room see yeah. first I, first i asked for animation and so oh, well, you, you don't have any experience and then they said well you're too young then, they, then i was like 25 and said well you're too old and then one time they told me i live too far to commute i'll be tired when i got to work so this time <clears throat> i gave up mm -hmm. i got a job at working uh, working for the county and uh but it was fire. So I started at the county and it was like a dead end job. I mean, you got 10 mm -hmm. people doing one thing. So uh, that's, so I went back to school. I went to uh, LA City College, <clears throat> taking art classes. Mm -hmm. I said, well, maybe I'll become an art teacher. So I took academic classes <clears throat> with art classes. And uh, about the ninth year of trying I just I gave up. But one day I went to work at the county and I asked one of the secretaries, uh, I just how the heck uh, fucking full of it. I said, I'm gonna write a letter to Disney again. So she dictated the letter and I mailed the letter. And two days later I got a call from personnel. And hey, can you come in for an interview? And they said, Well, we have a position open in the mail room. Would you would you accept it? I said, yes, <laughs> that's, that's how I got it. So it took nine years to get just to get right. the door. And, and after, after you got per, uh, past personnel, I mean, the, everybody else on the lot was, it was, it was nice. I mean, mm -hmm. totally nice. I mean, um, I mean, I used to go visit Holly and Frank. They lived next door together mm -hmm. in, what is it called? Uh, not in Montreal, it's called uh, La Canada. No, Flint Ridge, mm -hmm. <clears throat> right off the two freeways. So you see, they live right next door to each other. That's amazing. And, they, and they're at the studio, their desk, their, their room was right next to each other. Mm -hmm. and they wrote their work together, they did everything together. Mm -hmm. So uh, I befriended them. And even after they retired, I used to uh, go by and see them uh, at their house. And uh, I'm trying to think, and, uh, and I don't know if you heard of Kenton Anderson. He was mm -hmm. he was a storyboard guy at Disney. So I used to see I used to see I meet him over at uh, Viva's on Riverside, the Mexican restaurant. And uh, I, <clears throat> even after, after I left the studio, if I wanted to go to Disneyland, I would call one of them and say, "Oh, no problem, Bob. We'll have tickets for you. At the, we'll call." So I've never paid to go to Disneyland. So did you did you hear their story recently about uh, Shonda Rhimes and they wouldn't give her an uh, extra ticket or something? No, I haven't. Oh, so she created a uh, Grey's Anatomy and uh, How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal, and she ended up going with Netflix because the Disney CEO she asked the Disney CEO for an extra ticket for her like sister or the nanny or something like that, and he's oh. like, "Don't you have enough?" And it's like, it's oh. a ticket to an amusement park. That's something. Um, yeah, you, you have the juice, so. Right, right. When I started, you your when I started in the mail room, I used to go to Disney every weekend. At Disney. Mm -hmm. I, you park, you just show me your Disney card, mm -hmm. well, paper card, and then you would park in the employee's parking lot. Uh, you, you, was, you, you was like an employee, actually. So yeah. They used to uh, print the tickets on the lot. I don't, I'm sure they don't do that anymore. So they had like A E tickets. I don't remember mm -hmm. that. E ticket was the was the, was the like the Manahorn, and mm -hmm. the A ticket was like uh, the little um, small world that would be. Mm -hmm. an a. And so the, the E is supposed to be most 
challenging ride. But uh, it used to have a, a printing department on the lot a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not there anymore. And they used to have a, me a mechanic, and uh, I guess it's still there. They had a me full time mechanic on the lot and a filling station. And, and a guy that did, did car wash. So every Thursday, I get the, you just leave your keys in the car and you tell, tell the guy, uh, you want your car wash, you wash your car. And you, after you work, your car's there already clean. Nice. All right. In those days, um, there weren't. There weren't that many black people in the lot. It was like um, the people that were of color were custodians and and mm -hmm. worked in the uh, commissary. Mm -hmm. uh, no security guards were of color. Um, night crew all all black. Um, th that was it. That was it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I had the greatest time there, though. I mean, <clears throat> I put Once down, you finally got in. <laughs> I, mean, I just lived in, in breathed, uh, and breathed mm -hmm. animation in, in uh, Disney. In those days, uh, it, it was kind of a dress code. I mean, even mm -hmm. though I worked in the, in the mail room, I wore a shirt and tie every day. Mm -hmm. I, didn't wear, I wore regular shoes. I didn't wear uh, tennis shoes to work, you know, jeans. All the other guys wore t-shirts and I said, no, I mean, I know I'm going to be out. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be ostracized, but that, that's, and that was from <clears> hope <throat> always, you know, uh, try to present myself in, in a dignified manner. Yeah. I, I couldn't afford to look uh, skanky. <laughs> you we get it. Because you're going into, you know, business, I mean, you going into executive offices uh, in the mornings? No, this was like three months after Walt passed away. Mm -hmm. He still had two or three secretaries in his office. So in the morning, uh, the uh, supervisor's name was uh, Mac McCarthy. He he would supervise the mail departments, like ten or fifteen of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, Bob, go out to the commissary and take some coffee up to Walt's office. So you take a cart, you go to the commissary, they have the cart and the coffee ready, and you take up to his office. And uh, like he was still there, but his coffee was his, for his secretaries. Mm -hmm. It always been fascinating to go in that office because he had an apartment. It was like these office was like in three or four tiers, <clears throat> sections rather. Mm -hmm. And the last part where it was, I, I guess he slept there at night, but it was fascinating. and. I think that office now, they have a replica in Disneyland now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it just, it was, it was amazing time, I must say. Yeah. So can you tell us um, where you're from and how was it growing up? I was uh, born in New York City on 2nd Nicholas Avenue. Uh, my parents came here. I came here when I was three or four. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in Los Angeles. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, 55th and Central Avenue, and went to Hooper Avenue Street School, and see from Hooper <clears throat> went to um, another grammar school. I think it was South, South Park Grammar School. So in Manchester and Avalon, mm -hmm. and I, I forget what grade I was in, but one of my teachers, she used to work at Disney as a cell painter. Which right. I didn't check that was, and I was like seven or eight, and she bought in a Disney cell, and she was showing us the work that she used to do. You know, you, you uh, in those days, the cell was hand painted, and they turned over, you painted. Now they, they was used like a Xerox machine for the yeah. graphite line, and then, it, but uh, before it was all hand. She, it, it, I was impressed, but it was like. Uh, it lay dormant for for years, you know. Yeah. Then you know what? Twenty years later, then I'm working at Disney, and uh, that was my kind of my first exposure. Mm -hmm. From there, um, went to um, I went to Bret Hart. Bret Hart was a junior high school on on Hoover, not like Ninety Second Street. And mm -hmm. It was like only fifty people of color in the whole school. Mm -hmm. and, he had, he had to fight the uh, the residents because they didn't want to stay in that area. And that's not Hoover. Not Hoover's a different 
climb it over there now. Mm -hmm. And then from uh, Bret Hart went to Gompers, and then I moved, my mom and I moved into Nicholson Projects mm -hmm. <laughs> on Imperial and Central. And mm -hmm. these projects at that time were brand new, they were like, you know, like condos. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're still there, but they're different. Yeah. Uh, that, that was, it was, it was fun time. But from going from Bret Hart to Gompers, like going from, uh, I mean, this night, night and day, mm -hmm. night, night and day. I mean, it looked like they didn't, it, it was different. <laughs> I didn't, but I, I still wasn't exposed to, or, or I didn't know anybody in the art field. Mm -hmm. It was just I, I couldn't explain. <laughs> I can't explain. But There's from, nobody. But from uh, from the project, we stayed in the projects until I graduated from. Graduated from uh, oh, <clears throat> instead of going to the local school in Watts, I went to Fremont High School. Mm -hmm. and that's when I graduated from Fremont, and that's when I had uh, uh, well, one art teacher was Mr. Sampler, and the other one was Mr. Elgin. And Mr. Elgin taught cartooning, Mr. Sampler taught design. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my introduction to, to art. And then when I graduated from <clears throat> Fremont, my aunt paid me to go to Chenard. It was like a summer course, six week or 17, 16 week summer course. Mm -hmm. And took life, life drawing and cartooning. Now, from high school to art school, first time seeing a, a nude model was 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 different. <laughs> but you know, you had to be professional. You know, mm -hmm. so my uh, dad, I think my dad said he quit, like, because my dad didn't go into art, but he said he quit art after he had to do a nude model. <laughs> He's like, uh, I'm good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, all kinds. I mean, some some uh, some classes were, or some schools, you know, the the, the male would wear like a jockey strap, mm -hmm. and the women didn't wear anything. Mm -hmm. But now they don't use jockey straps anymore. Right. It, it is everything is out there. But you know, but you get a different setting and a mindset. You don't be thinking, you know. Yeah. Pornography, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you uh, pregnant ladies model. That was your day. Some uh, uh, <clears throat> endowed women and some thin women. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was it was it was fun. And occasionally, I still do. You know, if you, if you have the basis of life drawing, yeah, you don't have to know each muscle and and bone. But just just know the basics. Mm -hmm. that, that that's that's what you need, even for animation. Yeah. Uh, most of the artists now use the mouse or yeah mm -hmm. down uh, <clears throat> some type of some type of visual aid. But uh, just using a you know Connie crayon or charcoal mm -hmm. or pencil, and that's to me that's challenging. Yeah. You know? I remember I took gesture drawing in college and just seeing my progress from like being my drawings being so stiff in the beginning and then being more loose towards the end of the class. Right, right. Yeah, once you learn the correct way, then you can just branch out, you know. You can learn a little Leonardo da Vinci, but you can go out to go take the Picasso route if you care to, you know. Yeah. He, he knew where everything was, but he just kind of, you know, went out on his own. And yeah. He's one of my, one of my favorite. He and Van Gogh. And uh, Jalista Trek and and uh, Matisse, mm -hmm. uh, I, I like their work. And you know they they did until uh, Matisse, he painted. He got had I think he had arthritis. He had some illness, but he painted while he was in bed. You know. Yeah. So, but it was what's good about being an artist? You never retire. Mm -hmm. You 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 do it until see, you can't do it anymore. But you know, even doctors and lawyers, they retire, and that's it. Yeah. Artists have longevity in terms of uh, creativity. 
So as, as far as your childhood, you kind of mentioned it. So did you, you said, you know, you had the art, the art classes in high school. What was kind of your relationship with art and animation in like younger? Did you just watch the movies and never draw? Or did you get a chance to watch the movies? What, what was it? Uh, <clears throat> yes, watch the movies, but I, I didn't know analytically what I was, what I was looking at. I mean, because mm -hmm. it was a theater, uh, I think it was on Broadway and Sloss, it was called the, the Strand Theater. On Saturdays, they would show 100 cartoons and two features. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, was, they, would show, they would show 50 cartoons, right, in a consecutive order. Mm -hmm. Then they'll show a feature, then another 50. So, I mean, I was, I don't know, picking up through osmosis or something, but <laughs> it was incredible. And then uh, when I was seven or eight, I used to trace the cover of comic book, comic books. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no one else, you know, no one told me right or wrong. I just, I never wanted to do something, but I didn't, I didn't know what. Yeah, you know? good guidance. And, and, and you know, adults at that time would ask, "Oh, what you want to be when you grow up?" And I said, "I want to be an artist." Oh, oh sure. You know, get, get you a real job. You know, get you a real job. <laughs> you know, and it was, it was funny. You know, I, I gave up. I gave up for a long time mm -hmm. drawing and just hung out with you know so-called fun people having fun, but no creativity. I, you know, my my philosophy is, <clears throat> if you like basketball. You don't hang around with football players. Right. You should hang around with people that y'all have something in common, mm -hmm. some creativity. And you know, you um, you know, I've lost a lot of relationships. You know, they say that ladies would say, "All you do is draw." I say, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> always busy, especially when uh, when you had like uh, animation used to be seasonal for television, mm -hmm. so you, you would work from May to." Maybe November, that was your window of opportunity to make money for the for the year. Yeah. So you would probably be picking up from two or three studios on freelance basis. Mm -hmm. You would work in studio for one studio, then you'd be freelancing for two others. And you know, I remember a time I would you know work all night <clears throat> to get to get the uh, footage finished, so I could take it in the next morning. You know, and. Uh, you know, <clears throat> that was it, it was hectic, but it was rewarding after it was finished. Uh, we yeah, yeah, all, yeah. Yeah. Out of it. Out of it. yeah, and you work all night and you take it to the studio and, and they, you know, take the scene and say, Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're like, hell, what the hell you went through to get to that point. And you're, anyway, it's, it's, it's been a fun adventure, it's still fun. Uh, I, I don't do any. Uh, animation uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the last uh, job that had animation was sheet timing, okay. mm -hmm. which, uh, which is fun as well. And uh, what's the other one? Um, layout artist. Hey, pardon? Layout artist. I, I, did, I did, did layout sheet timing. I did um, I don't, you you interviewed uh, interviewed Bruce Smith, right? Um, no, not yet. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, he, he, before he went back to Disney, he did. Uh, he had studios called Jambalaya. Mm -hmm. He did Proud Family. So I did. I helped him. Uh, worked with him on Proud Family, doing uh, the timing, okay. uh, using uh, the animatic, uh, download the animatic, and then. Then time, time to action out. But that was that was the last time I did something like that. And then I worked with uh, Ron Myrick on um, some of his shows. I think uh, superheroes. I think the is it so called Legends or something like that. Or uh, some I, I I didn't write down all of them. Oh, that okay. worked on, but uh. a lot of them. Um, Dino, uh, Dynamite. Did that sound familiar? It was, it, was, year? it was on uh, um, Adults Swim. Mm -hmm. kind of, it was a takeoff, looked like um, Superfly. It was, okay. They did a movie, I believe. Um, 
I think it's black called dynamite. Black dynamite. That black dynamite, or yeah, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're well, no, on that with uh, Ron Murray and uh, a lot of shows. Um, King is, I forget, I forget the titles now. Some King, I think it's King. I got them. I got them. I mean, you you listed a lot of them, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so the um. You kind of alluded to it, but were your parents supportive of uh, your art career? Well, um, actually, it was my my mom. It was just my mom and I. You know, mm -hmm. my dad wasn't involved, mm -hmm. so uh, they would say, "Oh, that's good, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's good." And they come back in their mind, "You better get you a real career going here, a real job." Mm -hmm. So uh, after high school. <sighs> I uh, I said I'll take a, I'll take a semester off. I won't go mm -hmm. right to college. Mm -hmm. So I wound up working in a junkyard in 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 uh, Gardena, mm -hmm. taking tires off of rims. Ten was it ten cents a tire? So I did that, did that for a week or two. <laughs> I mean, this was without hydraulics. You know, it's, it's hand manually done. Yeah. So if you do a hundred. Tire, well, yeah, if you do 100 and 10 cents a tire, I mean, you're so tired. So I, I wind up going to the liquor store and spending half of it just on beer to try to recover it. So from there, <laughs> I worked a, a laundry on Washington and Vermont. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine's parents worked there, so they got me a job there. And uh, sorting dirty laundry as the laundry come in from hospitals and restaurants, you have to separate the uh, the garments and some of them would come from butcher shops and mm -hmm. and the meat would be stuck to the apron and then you see you know the maggots and then uh, from the hospitals they have surgery stuff you know like jello so I lasted there a week or two <laughs> so, so, Went to the doctor and said, "Well, you got touch of pneumonia. I said, well, what are you doing? So you got to quit that job. So I quit that. Mm -hmm. uh, took a, cla a class. The studio, the studio is no longer there. It was on Temple and um, Figaro. It's called Grant Beach Studio, <clears throat> and uh, took some sculpture classes there. His gentleman's name is Tim Harvey. Hart. Mm -hmm. Hart. Hart. Is he Tim? Hara. He was a Japanese gentleman." Mm -hmm. So did sculpture there, and then from there, worked at a watch company downtown in, in the jewelry uh, district on Fifth and Broadway. I said, "Well, this he's doing something artistic." So with they, they would refinish the face of the watch. Mm -hmm. Then you had a, like a press, and you would print the original name back on the face of the watch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a while, and then then I took the county test, passed it, left the watch company, worked for the county, then Disney. Mm -hmm. So so when you worked for the county, your mom was like, "Okay, this is a real job." Yeah, right, right, yeah. And uh, actually, <clears throat> when I started the county, uh, after a year or two, then I started painting painting again. Mm -hmm. And some of the doctors would have um, some of the doctors bought my artwork. One of the uh, head radiologists, Dr. Jacobson at the time of uh, U USC Medical Center, he saw my work and he uh, recommend me, recommended me to go see Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross was uh, in charge of uh, the city art department. Mm -hmm. So I went to see Mr. Ross at City Hall and he had some art exhibit. So uh, I think I had one or two pieces in a in an art exhibit for the city. Nice. And a lot of doctors told me, so you shouldn't be working here. You should, you know, you know. So <clears throat> they used to have a department which is called medical illustration, mm -hmm. where you would uh, draw the different parts of the body. Right. Uh, or, or even it had a little animation where you do uh, animate certain uh, surgical procedures. Mm -hmm. It's all computerized now, but it used to be done by hand. And uh, I met the lady and, and, uh, and she said, uh, you know, just, you know, keep practicing. <clears throat> so I was anticipating that 
and I was going to LA City College. And then uh, I had a, a life drawing teacher, um, Mr. Oh, what's his name? Oh, I think, oh Dave, Dave, I forget his name. He told me about a school in Guadalajara. They had like a six week summer course for artists. And uh, in Mexico? In Mexico, in South Africa. <laughs> He said, you can drive there. So I was thinking, I said, okay, I can drive there. I had a little sports car at the time. I mm -hmm. drive down. And he said, you would like, they had breakfast, you would stay with the, with the locals. But in the meantime, that's when I got the job at Disney, so I didn't follow through. Okay. <laughs> it was Dave Ramirez. Was it? Mm -hmm. yeah, he was a fantastic life drawing teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he drew like, like Michelangelo type of style. I mean, nice. you, don't know, you don't have to name the parts, but you know, if you take more yourself to you know pursue a little further in terms of the names of the of the uh, the bones, mm -hmm. but, uh, gesture was emphasized. You know, the gesture balance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's how that's how I got started. I mean, it was a bumpy road. Yeah. I mean, because some people complain about moving to LA and it take them two or three years or, I mean, it took, it took you much longer, three times yeah. that. Yeah. So um, I'm about to, you, you, you've already like listed a bunch of stuff that you worked on, but I'm going to list a couple more um, just so we, because we, it's important that we know black people worked on some of our favorite things. Oh, okay. We already talked about Shinbone Alley, Heavy Traffic. Um, you talked about Robin Hood. Uh, the Fat Albert Halloween special and the Christmas special. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, Fat Albert. Scooby, yes. Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo, The World's Greatest Super Friends, Trollkins, Flash Gordon, The Smurfs, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, He Man and the Masters of the Universe, Ghostbusters, <laughs> She Ra, Princess of Power, um, Brave Star. You already mentioned Jetsons, the movie, Kid and Play, the short. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, The Simpsons. You talked about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, X Men, the animated series, The Adams Family, Sonic the Hedgehog. You mentioned Cat Stone Dance and The Iron Giant, um, Family Guy, Osmosis Jones, and the Prop Family movie, among other things. I don't, I, I, just, I don't <laughs> list everything, but um, what? So you talked about this. What do you think is the benefit of companies investing in their artists and providing classes like Disney used to do? Um, these days, it feels like you pretty much have to be perfect <laughs> to get into a job. Right, right. Uh, yeah, D Disney, uh, DreamWorks, and uh, Warner's used to have uh, uh, classes mm -hmm. you know, for the artists, you know, to uh, you know stay <clears throat> stay abreast of things, but. Uh, I don't think they do that. I know Disney had uh, Glenn um, Neil Pro. He taught life drawing. I used mm -hmm. to work with Glenn at Warner's. I think he still teaches, but I think it's all virtual now. Yeah. And um, so, what do you feel is like the benefit of it, um, and the mentorship you received? Oh, said again. What do you feel is the benefit of them providing the classes and uh, the mentorship you received from various people? Oh, is it's 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 invaluable. It's just, it it sharpens your skills, and uh, you find out what you don't know, what you need to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's I don't know if they still do it or not, but um, they have some training programs. But I imagine the mentorship you had was like a fast track of. <clears throat> yeah, I mean to uh, go into Ali Johnson's room while he's drawing, mm -hmm. and or Mill calls. Well, Mel Cole wouldn't let you see him draw. He, if you go in his room and he'd be drawing, and I say, Mel, and, he, and he'll put his pencil down, turn around, and talk to you, but you know, I saw him draw, but you see the drawing in his desk. But Man, I was, I, I'm wondering because you know, he had the little wiggle and he was able to turn <laughs> things and keep perspective, so yeah, I, I guess he just wasn't giving away his secrets or something. <laughs> oh, when I, when, I worked, <laughs> when I worked with uh, Mel Call, yeah, after I finished the scene. Take it to him for approval, and and he said, "Oh, thank you." Then what he'll do, he'll put your drawing on his board. He'll put a, a new piece of paper over your drawing, and then he said, "If I was if I was doing this," mm -hmm. 
and he kind of work over your drawing and you got to take it back, you know. So I got, I got I'll say, I know what to do next time. I'll wait till he's out of his room, then I'll put it on his desk. So that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great to work working with them. I mean, uh, I, I mean, they, they're, 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 it was like magic to, to watch to watch them just, mm -hmm. and this, this was, was with, out any uh, books of referencing. I mean, it's all from the mind. Most of all the animators had uh, mirrors of, on their desks. Yeah. You know, they act out the scene. It wasn't pre-timed or anything. All they had was the dialogue. And then from the based on the dialogue, you had to act, act it out in your mind. Yeah. It was, um, and it still turned out beautiful. Like, oh, how was it to have those friendships with like Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston and other people um, that you know people just like uphold in the animation industry? Right, right, right. Now, I shouldn't mention his name, but one of the, one of the what nine old men when he passed away, I got a letter from the attorney. Mm -hmm. I said, "Where was this from?" And it was someone one of the animators left me in his will. Oh and, wow. And I said, oh. and I asked the attorney, wait a minute, I'm not part of the family. He said, well, he must have thought a lot of you. I said, oh, well, thank you. And I don't mention the guy's name. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you never know who who's watching you. Yeah, uh, and that's the importance of building relationships because a lot of people, whether they're young or older, don't realize like when you're networking, it's not about the give and take. It's about building like a human connection. Right, right, right. Well, when I was in traffic, also, um, you heard of Wooly Rivalman. Mm -hmm. He was one of the top animators there. <clears throat> well, I think two of his sons worked in traffic. Oh, basically, the traffic, the mail department, they called it traffic. The, the, that uh, particular department was like for employees, kids to work in during the summer. Mm -hmm. And became, then it became a year round uh, job. You know, for non-employee kids. So uh, Willie Riverman's when his sons worked in traffic, and one time he gave a party at his house. Willie lived in uh, Glendale, Burbank. So I, all of us went up to his house, and at the time, <clears throat> you could uh, rent movies from Disney. Mm -hmm. If you want any movie Disney ever made, you could rent. So that what you would. Oh wow. You would uh, pick out what movie you wanted, and they and they would give you a sixteen millimeter projector. They would have it ready for you at the front gate, with your for all the films that you ordered, and you take them home, and you bring them back. Uh, if it, a lot of people like to do it, pick them up on Friday and bring them back Monday. Yeah. So I used to do that, and I have little kids from around, around the neighborhood come by and uh, watch Disney movies there. Yeah. So yeah. now everything's on DVD, but yeah, yeah. That, that, was a, that was a big thing, you know. And uh, I didn't meet him, but Phyllis Diller's son used to work in traffic also. Mm -hmm. uh, Phyllis Diller? Yeah. yeah okay, all right. Well, <laughs> so there was a lot of celebrity kids uh, worked in the uh, mail department. I mean, they went on to, you know, bigger and better things, but mm -hmm. places, they uh, got their start. I think one guy became a, a writer. Mm -hmm. uh, he was always writing uh, between uh, deliveries. You, you had a, it was like you had a gate run, you had a uh, short, short run, and you had a mail run. The the, uh, <clears throat> the runs consist of picking up all the mail on a section of the lot, mm -hmm. and cover the back lot, and then the short run would be where they used to do short animation and uh, they helped the building, but it, they did uh, comic strips <clears throat> in the same building. Mm -hmm. they did, uh, comic strips and music was all in the same building. So you would go through there and, and see, uh, oh, I forget those the two brothers that did uh, uh, Mary Poppins music, the uh, what is it? Sherman, Sherman Brothers. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Sherman Brothers? Uh, I believe so. I'm not sure. Okay, well, Sherman Brothers, well, both of them will be there, you know, with the music sheets all over and the piano doing doing just in movies. And then sometimes you would take uh, something to one of the sound stages, 
And uh, if the light wasn't on, they have a red light outside the stage. If it was blinking, you all go in. I would, I would go in, they were filming, I think it was The Happiest Millionaire with Fred McMurray. And mm -hmm. I saw Fred, Fred, I saw a lot of actors, you know, in person on the lot. Uh, it was, I mean, I was like in, uh, I don't know, I can't say a lot of them. It was just <laughs> to be, be, be involved and yeah. everyone just it, it treated me well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, no regrets. I mean, animation uh, in general just, and I think one of the uh, best producers was probably to, to work with was Chuck Jones. He was, mm -hmm. That's when <clears throat> Chuck Jones did his layout. He had a layout guy, but he would do the story layout he would, with the layout guy. I mean, he was he was hands on, and it was just it was only two assistants, mm -hmm. and they had three animators: uh, uh, Virgil Virgil Ross, Benny Washam. I don't know if you heard these guys or not. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Hal Ambrose, George Nichols. All the previous Disney guys, and they were mm -hmm. for Judge Jones, and it was another, another. It was myself and uh, Joe Roman. We we were the assistants, and Ray Aragon was the background artist layout. <clears throat> it was like maybe ten people worked on all this for, for five years on on the TV specials. Mm -hmm. And uh, can Charlie, you explain what a layout artist do, does, since that's pretty much not existed anymore? Uh, uh, layout artists would. Basically, uh, interpret the script. Mm -hmm. So, if you said characters walking upstairs, so the artist with you would uh, draw a character. Now, it depends on angle. Mm -hmm. that, that depends on the director. Uh, if, you know, it's a long shot, up close up. So, you, you use your imagination on that, and then um, basically, layout artists. Now that they use layout for extreme poses now <laughs> mm -hmm. just, I mean, just just for reference you know yeah. who's the scene and, you know what's the environment but now uh you know, they, they want the layout to be almost like the, the like extreme because most of us sent overseas yeah mm -hmm. because when i when i worked in taiwan the taiwanese animators when they when they got a scene to animate just a dialogue on a blank sheet. They didn't know what to do <laughs> because it wasn't sheet time. It, that's what they were used to, sheet time. Yeah. So uh, it's different, All right? No. Uh, yeah, my first job in animation was actually in South Korea. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You know, you know. Yeah. And then uh, working for Chuck, I remember one, one afternoon, <clears throat> around three, Chuck Jones asked the, all of us to come into his room, big office, and here sits uh, Ray, Bad Ray Bradbury and Chuck were friends. So mm -hmm. Ray Bradbury was in there. Uh, Johnny Hart used to do The Wizard of Ed. Mm -hmm. and, and they had a bartender in there. <laughs> and we just sat around drinking and talking. They don't do that stuff anymore, but I was watching Mad Men, the TV show, and I was like, when did this transition from not yeah. having alcohol in your... <laughs> yeah, right. I, I worked for, um, when I was working for, on Archim or Shinbone Alley, <clears throat> there was a, used to be a, a bar at the top of uh, Sunset and Vine, the towers, which are uh, condos now. MGM used to have uh, three or four floors in that building before they uh, stop doing animation. I think the end, first, the last animation <clears throat> MGM did was uh, Phantom of the Toe Boop. Mm -hmm. And uh, so MGM got out of animation. So Chuck Jones kept the two floors, the, I think it was the 12th, 11th, and 12th floor. That's where he did productions on, on his specials. But on the <clears throat> top floor was the cocktail lounge. And that's, <laughs> that's where we would go up. I, uh, met uh, a lot of artists up there. Mm -hmm. It was like in those days, if, if you're at the bar and someone said, oh, what are you, what are you working? You say, oh, I'm not working right now. Oh, come see me Monday. And I mean, that's how you got a job. But, nice. but now, I mean, you have to go through the 
the human resource department and submit yeah. a resume, you know, do it online. I mean, there's nothing. And maybe even do a test. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I never I never did a test. never had a portfolio up until, you know, later, later years, mm -hmm. in the 2000s. But, uh, I think when I became uh, lead key, I didn't have to show a, a portfolio. It was just more of a reputation. Yeah. You know? So yeah, now I mean, even with a good reputation, I still can't get a job if I wanted one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, can you tell me about um, t Tyler Tots? Tyler Tots, uh, something I was trying to do. 80, 86. Mm -hmm. a friend of mine came up with the concept. She said she came out, came out, came out uh, came, approached me and said, "Oh, I got an idea for." Uh, some dolls called chocolate pudding and could you could you uh do, do me uh, some drawings so i did and uh as, as, so what happened i you know i didn't i didn't know which way to go with it mm -hmm. so it was it was a guy that worked at um california plush i met him and based on my drawings he did a prototype doll uh, six, seven, 17 inch size doll. This is before Cabbage Patch. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, he did the doll, and um, and then first I had I had the one one character, one one doll, mm -hmm. and I saw make a little boy character and had, had the boy doll, and one of having uh, one of each race. Mm -hmm. multi, it was uh, American uh, Native and Hispanic and mm -hmm. Caucasian doll. And, I think it was uh, five girls and five boys, and then uh, her uh, <clears throat> friend of ours wanted to invest his money. He said, "Well, I have a my wife's uncle works for Mattel, yeah. and I'll set up an appointment." So I take the prototype. We well, all three of us go to Mattel, you know, uh, Rosecrans. And met, met her uncle, and he just introduced us to the uh, uh, girl, which is a little girl's rep, or, or uh, mm -hmm. I forget what they call it now. Uh, so he showed us the prototype, and then they said, <clears throat> "Well, this is, this is a nice product, but uh, we did we do uh, we do what you call it um, tests." It's it's like when the uh, because the, what's the word for uh, the, sur like a survey, mm -hmm, they, like a focus group, right? Yeah, they woke they woke a group of little kids and say which which dolls do they like, and he said um, most of the most of the kids like white uh, skin dolls, and he said you good concept, but we we can't uh, our surveys say that. <clears throat> the black kids really don't. They, they they gravitate to what they do. They put a collection of different colored dolls in front of these kids. Mm -hmm. and the kids pick the white. At the, this was in the eighties. Mm -hmm. So uh, they told they told us, well, no, we 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 don't uh, at at this at this time we're not uh, interested in you know promoting a, a non. They didn't say non white, they said promoting an ethnic doll. Mm -hmm. said, okay, so I got some friends together that, that did uh, preliminary work for the studios. I had an excellent background guy. I did a, a background for my characters. I, I did the presentation exactly where the studios presented to the networks. Mm -hmm. I had the dolls lined up and I went to. Was it California plush or was it Russ? What another talk in, in Northridge, <clears throat> and this was lady of color was the head of the department, and she said, "Oh, these are great." Uh, she and then she said, uh, "Well, I'll get back to you." And a friend of mine that, was, that did the backgrounds for me, he worked there, <clears throat> and he called me. This white guy, mm -hmm. he said, "Bob, I, I, I feel bad." I said, why? He said, they, they said, if you're going to deal with one of the companies, they, they call a good faith 
pay, good faith pay. You mm-hmm. know, maybe two hundred thousand dollars just to show good faith. And, yeah. And he said he he said how uh, he thought they meant that they could not see giving this fellow of color two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars for his idea, just upfront money. So that deal, and they fired the lady. So she was like, she wasn't there anymore. Oh, dang. So I wound up, um, I took some dolls to Filmation uh, one day. And I had a few of them and I sold them all. I said, okay, I have something, but I just don't know how to go about it. So I wind up taking a doll, went down to Jamaica and I had, just happened to have a doll in my suitcase. And one of the, at one of the gift shops, I asked the lady, uh, she had some dolls there. I said, who, who does your dolls? She said, oh, uh, lady down the road. So I went down the road, met this lady. She has a little cottage business. Mm-hmm. And her name was Eileen. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I said, oh, I can do the doll for you, honey, no problem. And she had like 15, uh, 16 ladies working in her backyard doing uh, gift work. And so, uh, she said, give me a day. So I stayed the next day. She brings the doll back, all dressed up and everything. Mm-hmm. So I start uh, sending the raw material to her. She would do the dresses. I would send the um, the material and the stuffings. And she made the dolls for me for a long time. And then, <clears throat> then when I went back the second time, you know, taking boxes of raw material to Jamaica. And that's a whole kettle of worms there because you had to go through customs and, yeah. and bring in certain things. And uh, uh, I, I got around, I said, well, I came down here to teach. <laughs> and they're all mine, you know, you know, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So mm-hmm. that grew, so she did the dolls. So it is, then she started sending them to me, UPS. Mm-hmm. And then uh, did a couple of trade shows at the uh, at the convention center downtown. And it was called the Brockman Gift Show. That's an annual event. Mm-hmm. Got some orders from that uh, gift shop in uh, Alaska. A lady in on the Bay Area. So and then then I ran out of money mm-hmm. and I couldn't find someone to produce the dolls. Yeah. And. That's what happened to the Tyler Tots. So why I changed the name from uh, Chalky Pudding to Tyler Tots? Someone else had the name uh, oh, Chalky okay. Pudding, mm-hmm. right? Right. So uh, that's my story on that. <laughs> that I, I saw the drawings; they're really nice. Um, so I really like your painting, uh, "Search for the New Land Number Two. What made you transition into fine art, and what do you like about oil painting and uh, block printing? Uh, you know, since I'm not a writer, so I, I just kind of translates my feelings into my artwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, Certain for New Land is is a it's a title of a, of a music tune by uh, what's his name? I forget his name now. It's a jazz musician. Uh, what is his name? Oh, oh I, I knew it was around the tip of my tongue. <laughs> uh, Lee Morgan? Lee Morgan. Search for New Land. Yes. 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 And uh, I, did, I did two, did two uh, titles with that. Mm-hmm. And, and the last painting I did was called. Um, Water dancers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Now that one is. I got I got the the name from uh, Tallahassee Coates' book. It's mm-hmm. called Water, Water Dance. But mine is. I think I saw him. He came to New, well. I just moved to LA from New Orleans, but he came to New Orleans, and I think he did a talk for that book. And I okay. went to see him. I, I didn't read the book. Well, after I, I finished, have it, but I haven't read it. <laughs> okay, I I, I have. I have the book, I haven't read it, but uh, when I finished the painting, you know, the, uh, and I showed it to a friend of mine and she said, oh, it looked like they're dancing on water. So that's how I got the title. And then mm-hmm. of course, uh, his title. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually uh, right now, uh, El Camino 
college have a, a Black Lives Matter art exhibit, virtual. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the lady, uh, one of the, cur the curator for the, for the show, she texted me and said, would I be interested in participating? Mm -hmm. So I just had a day to, she, she wanted um, like a resume and a collection of my work. And just I had like 12 hours to do it. I said, well, I, I won't have time maybe next year, but here's some of my work. So I sent her three samples and she picked out uh, the water dancers. So I'm number 90 if you ever go to their website. It's, it'll run to the end of the month. He has a Black Lives Matter virtual art exhibit, Health Community okay. College. Right. All right. And so based on that, I think I saw already four prints already from that. Nice. Yeah, right. you're right. So uh, my inspiration comes from, I would say, some, some from music, mm -hmm. some from life experience. I did, I did one several years ago about a relationship going bad. <laughs> it's called, you don't, you don't know what love is. <laughs> that sounds like a blues song. I, I know it. I know it. I know. <laughs> so that's that's how some of my titles come about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That sounds like a horrible relationship. <laughs> um. So, how many exhibits have you had, and like, where have they been hosted? Oh, uh, I've had. Uh, Three at the three or four at the, at the uh, animation guild. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to have I was supposed to have had one last <clears throat> May because of the virus. Yeah, <clears throat> had to cancel it. So I rescheduled it for next next year April, but hopefully by then you know there might be some semblance of normality by then. Mm -hmm. But I'm scheduled uh, to have it at the animation guild. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in May. And I've had, let's see, I, I did the Westwood art exhibit. It's like a, all the time and working about it's like a, um, a flea market. <laughs> <laughs> you got a picture, 10, no, it's a lot of work. And one in, uh, see Westwood, um, there's a friend of mine that he does a annual fundraising for music scholarships for, uh, for the Watts Willowbrook Music School, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I did I did two exhibits at his house he, <clears throat> in Glendale. He he has live music, nice, and, and then the people I think they pay to get in. And he, and he does, donates that for the kids' instruments. So I did two shows there. And then I've um, one um, Alhambra City Hall, I did one there. Loomis, it's in uh, Highland Park. Oh, I just, I was just, I was just living there in Highland Park. Oh well, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. There's a Loomis home, uh, I guess one of the founders of the area, and they have an annual event. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that, but um, then I, then my work is on a couple of websites, uh, Fine Art America and Essay. So that's a bit, <clears throat> yeah, as of now, but uh, so I'm preparing work now for next May, mm -hmm. and um, and then a few commissions. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's been a it's been a great great adventure of being an artist. I mean, coming up with mm -hmm. something out of midair. Yeah. And, I, and personally, I think artists are very undervalued. You know. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're an artist. Well, draw me something. Now, if you're a dentist and say, well, check this tooth out, you know, you know <laughs> come to my office and I'm going to charge you $200. Right. I was, I've, done, I've done free stuff. I remember I, went, I worked with one studio. The guy didn't have a budget. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to draw. Yeah. So he he paid, he paid me Wheaties and hot dogs. That's what was for lunch. <laughs> I remember the, it was a, 
it was the, the film was kind of where it went. It's called uh, the Possum That Couldn't Smile, <clears throat> and his name was Ooh. Bob Connacow. And Bob lived in Hollywood. He worked out of his house. <clears throat> and another good friend of mine, Milk Gray, and I, we we worked for for hot dogs and wieners, and that's what that's what they paid us. <laughs> it was, you know, it still was fun. You know? Yeah. I, I spoke with uh, Donald Towns about trying to get, uh, he was talking about trying to get more black people in fine art. How, how do you think uh, that fine art, the fine art world could benefit from having more black artists? Well, I think, uh, I think you need more, need, need, need more uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My experience is so far that the white galleries don't show that much uh, black art. Mm -hmm. There's exceptions. There's exceptions. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know if you know, I've heard of, uh, it's a friend of Ron Mark and myself, uh, uh, Bernard Hope. He, mm -hmm. He's a fine artist. That's, his work is, <clears throat> I think Oprah has one of his pieces. Nice. Yeah, he lives in uh, Palm Springs. He, he does sculpture and fine art. So he's the only one I know that is, <clears throat> That's being, you know, accepted in, in non mainstream, you know, yeah. right? And there's some galleries over in the Merritt Park. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I think I think if you categorize yourself as a black artist instead of a black person, happen to be an artist, yeah, and then you know people want to call it ethnic art is they, yeah. they don't call Picasso or Rembrandt uh, ethnic artists. European, <laughs> there's more artists. Right, there's artists. So that was put a label on us. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if you read, um, what's her name? Uh, Wilkinson's book, uh, Cass. Mm -mm. What's her name? Well, she explains uh, how people and certain, in, in, in any of their caste system, U.S. we call it racism, but caste is the same thing. I think I saw somebody post about it because I read a lot of Facebook comments and stuff right, like that. I right. think I saw somebody post about that book and I think I took a screenshot of it so I could look up the right. book. So the caste system is people deal with people that look like them. Mm -hmm. if, you up the, if, you, uh, if you are the upper caste, you're not going to be dealing with the so-called untouchables, which which mm -hmm. means nobody wants to be bothered with you. Right. <laughs> so the galleries, I have, you know, I have next. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my work is not. Uh, I like your work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and tell the right person see uh, my work and say, you know, I don't, you like it. So why why it has to be a non Brown person to sanction and say, "Okay, uh, we are right, uh, you know, gatekeeper." Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's I tell you what, it's it's great being black. It's a good, it's a challenge. I tell you, especially. <laughs> I mean, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's a good challenge. You if you can make it a good challenge, or you can just give up and say, you know. I can't make it because the man's too hard on me. Oh, no, yeah, you have to persevere. You have to persevere. So, yeah. how do you feel like? Be did, did you feel like being black impacted your career, whether it was pre-retirement or after retirement, in any way? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, when when people look at your drawings, say animation, uh, if they're good, you know, they don't they don't know who who did it. Right. You no, know, unless you take the same physically to them, but no, you can see it on the screen. It's oh, this is black artist. This is that. You know, it's just it's all art, and uh, you know, people want to categorize uh, certain people. It's you know, it's sad, but it's you know, I mean, how, uh, since the election, you know, half the population is <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> And they're not gonna give up because yeah. they, don't, yeah, they don't want to give up the power, or they don't want to share it and put that way. No yeah. sharing of the piece of the pie. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, anyway, I, you know, I have no regrets though. No regrets. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you kept on pushing, kept on trucking. <laughs> um, uh, what do you, how do you think younger generations can benefit from talking to the veterans in the industry? Oh, absolutely. I think this should be necessary. I mean, if, if I, if I had someone, a mentor or someone uh, told me or exposed me to when I was like 12, 13, you know, the world of art, uh, I think I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, since I went to a museum, I mean, it took all that. I mean, no, <clears throat> no one in the neighborhood took us to me, took me to a museum, mm -hmm. uh, showed me any art books. It was just like, uh, it just happened, you know? Uh -huh. But even like people like me and others and my peers who are in the industry talking to y'all, it's like, there shouldn't be such a disconnect sometimes. I know, I know, I know. Now the, the uh, Animation Guild do have, as you know, classes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in the union. Um, I don't know if they charge you more now, but the union the union has uh, classes. If you're in the union, they have they have free classes. Mm -hmm. They teach you know uh, 3D animation, uh, storyboard, but you know a lot of software. But um, I'm trying to think. Uh, a <clears throat> long time ago, I think Watts used to have the Watts Art Center had an art, art classes. This was after the riots. I don't know if they still have that or not. Mm -hmm. I, re <clears throat> I remember um, this was years ago. The uh, the alumni at Fremont <clears throat> they invited um, some of the students that had graduated that so called made it yeah. into a class. <laughs> So um, I think Kenneth Hahn, Kenneth Hahn went to Fremont. So he was there. There was a gentleman that uh, was a police officer, myself, and uh, they. <clears throat> I, I I had a, a meeting with two art classes, and I think they, they went to social science uh, classes. Yeah. And I was telling the students, you know, <clears throat> what they. What they should do if you want to get ahead, mm -hmm. you know. This is when Jerry Curls was popular, you know. Mm -hmm. Jerry Curls is great, but you can't get a job with a drippy Jerry Curl. I mean, you have to, you have to be presentable. You can't get a job with your pants hanging. Mm -hmm. You can't get a job with t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And you can't get a job saying uh, speaking ebonics. Mm -hmm. Ebonics is cool, but we not cold switch. Not, not yeah, not not in the the uh, professional arena. Yes, and and yeah, some of them, you know, they they, they booed. You say, oh no, I'm gonna give up my, you know, my my way of life. I said, okay, but uh, tried to told you. <laughs> yeah, so those that's what, over twenty years ago. So those kids are in their forties now. So you know, some of them made it, I'm sure, but mm -hmm. yes. It's not easy, and then, then, then plus you got to have <clears throat> family and peer support. Yeah. You know, my, you know, my aunt took took the patients and you know to help me with art school. And <clears throat> if she wouldn't, have, I don't know what you know what happened. It was just my mom and I. Yeah. She, she she wasn't she didn't have a lot of money, so but um, you know coming up. Struggling, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know I was struggling, but it was struggling. I mean, looking mm -hmm. back at it, you know, uh, a better person. But now, you know, I appreciate everything I have now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a one. And the people that I've met, most of my, I would say, probably seven, eighty percent of my friends are artists. Mm -hmm. So if you like art, whatever you like, surround yourself with that environment. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say this, when I was in the projects, years later, 20 years later, I went back and some people still there. Mm -hmm. Only thing 
they, they have kids and their kids have kids and they just have a bigger unit, mm -hmm. but they still in the projects. Yeah. They've never been to the beach, mm -hmm. which is six miles. <laughs> you know, so some people get, they, that's their comfort level that they want to get out there. It's sad, but it's, you know, you, and then if I, when I go down there, <clears throat> I remember uh, I had a date, the lady lived off of, uh, she lived in, she lived in the neighborhood of uh, Imperial. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and I was making good money at, at uh, Chuck Jones, so I had bought a brand new Mercedes. So I, I go over to the hood to pick her up. <laughs> and her brother's outside by the car. Hey, man, you got $5. You know, <laughs> so certain, certain, certain places you can't go, you, you, certain people you can't deal with, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like having a, a Lamborghini and you go to 103rd. Mm -hmm. or, or you just, it, it, it's some things you can't do. Right. Yeah. If the people don't stop you, the police will stop you. You have a Lamborghini and Watts. He's a, he's a drug addict, a drug de dealer. <laughs> yeah, I feel like somebody said, um, somebody I interviewed before said when they would go to the studio, they would be driving in a certain area and they would get stopped because they're not supposed to have a nice car because you're black. <laughs> like, true. why are you here? I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that. You know, I had an infinity. <clears throat> years ago and police stopped me and they just wanted to see the registration. And then when I had the Mercedes, they stopped me also. Mm -hmm. and they just want to see the registration and uh, you can't be belligerent. You can't, you know, why are you stopping right. and get out and all, you know, you gotta be cool. Because yeah. uh, things are not like. <laughs> I saw a, a, a news thing where the guy had a, uh, the black guy had a nice vehicle. I can't remember what part of the country he was in. He got stopped maybe three times in the same day. He was like, I'm trading this in. Like, I can't. Wow. And then I've seen other people, another person suggests, um, like the guy, the black guy had a nice car and he put stuffed animals in the back just so he could, like, <laughs> they could think he's a father or something. Right, right. So when I do the last ticket I got for him, having a nice car and went to traffic school mm -hmm. and they asked everyone, well, you know, why are you here? And I told them what happened. He said, the, the, the facilitator said, well, you have a high profile profile car. I said, and just, you know, what can you do? I thought you were going to say you, you told them that I got stopped for being black. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you heard about the, the, the rapper that uh, the bank called the police on him? He, he wanted to pay cash for his car. Mm -hmm. So he, he withdraws like $250,000 out of his account. And he just put it in the bag and walks out the bank. <clears throat> and when he gets out of the bank, the police are there. Now he has a t-shirt on, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the, uh, the banker was suspicious because he got all this cash. And then he just told police, I like to pay cash in my cars, you know. Mm -hmm. And he didn't rob the bank, but just the idea of this guy having that much money in a paper bag. Going yeah, to the car dealer. Yeah, crazy being black. So my last question is: um, If there was a documentary about your life, what would you include other than your animation career? About my life? Yep. Uh, when I was uh, twenty-seven, I started skiing. So I've been skiing ever ever nice. since. I was skiing. Mm hmm. Snow ski, uh, belonged to a ski club. It's called Four Seasons Snowboard and Ski Club, Los Angeles. Hey. Here, uh, all the black ski clubs in the United States, we have the uh, ski area. Last, mm -hmm. it was in March, April, they met in. Um, I think I heard about that. You're all right. And we were bad about that. It was like three or four people died because of the virus. Yeah, they, I heard I heard about that. Right, right. So I've been skiing with them since uh ooh, I think we were like 27, 28. <clears throat> right. And uh I do oh and also I'm involved in a in a British car club. So I re I restored a, a TR6 car, which I still have. Yes. And uh, on the cover of a magazine, Moss Motors magazine. So I've, I've driven that car to Washington State or Colorado, mm -hmm. Oregon, 
Arizona and New Mexico. And there's uh, a lot of great people in the club. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, oh, maybe six, seven people of color mm -hmm. uh, in the club, but uh, it's just a fun group of people. Mm -hmm. So my friends, my friends vary, you know, uh, you have the car people, then they have the ski people, then they have the people, the, the art people. So I have really? like three things going and uh, it's all, it's all fun. It's all fun. Multifaceted yeah. person. <laughs> what? You're a multifaceted person. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Eclectic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So thank you for coming on my platform and letting okay. me highlight you. Uh, where can people purchase your art and follow you on social media? Oh, uh, they can go to um, is the art, fine art America. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, Art Tyler Art. They can uh, actually uh, find on America what they do. If you see something, uh, a print, well, they will uh, Say the print, you, you can get the print only, or you can get a train, you can get a t shirt, coffee, melt, they do all that. Mm -hmm. It was a great idea that they have. And then, uh, S E S T Y, mm -hmm. I'm on their uh, website as well. And then, this hopefully, this May at the Animation Guild mm -hmm. on exhibit, well, myself, Floyd Norman, mm -hmm. and uh, Luralene Waverly and mm -hmm. Christine Malof. We have a, a four four person art exhibit uh, at the Gill. Hopefully uh, in this May. Ne yeah, next May. Mm -hmm. Hope you can make it. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> okay. All right. The bells on. And oh, great, great. Follow you on social media. All right. Oh, Instagram also. I think I, think I have some stuff on Instagram as well. You're, um yes. Uh, Robert dot Tyler dot one sixty five. Right, right. All right. I sure appreciate this, Deborah. Thank you. Um, and to everyone out there, I would like you to like so I know it's real. Comment and tell me how you feel. Subscribe to Seal the Deal and sign up for post notifications to show your zeal. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. All right. Thank you.